Uh, I don't know how long the uh, weather will last. I think nobody, good weather will last. I don't know. I think nobody knows. But I thought it's important for us to uh, recap and then to glean the most important lessons uh, so that indeed if the haze does come back over this dry season or in subsequent years, uh, we will have learned the important lessons. The first key lesson uh, that I feel that we ought to learn uh, despite all these developments which are positive in the recent weeks, is that the haze is a long-term problem. Why do I say this? Uh, because slash and burn is the predominant method in Sumatra, in other areas, uh, and has been practiced for decades. It isn't a recent phenomenon. Our records on haze go back, I think, as far back as the 1970s. And I suspect that, uh, it, that this practice will be hard to eradicate and change overnight. Uh, whether it's small farmers, big corporations, this is the predominant method. And I think we have to um, face up squarely to that, to that challenge. So it is a long-term problem. And I'm pointing this out because it means that because it is so entrenched, so embedded in the system, you need a multi-pronged approach. And so Singapore must keep up diplomatic efforts and I, th I think also enlist the help of non-governmental agencies uh, to facilitate more sustainable and environmentally friendly practices in Indonesia. Uh, if you ask me whether it, will recur, it can recur next year, I would say quickly, yes, it's possible. Because, you know, we just have to face up the problem that this is quite an entrenched practice and we are really dependent on in Indonesia to solve the problem at, at source. There is a second key lesson, uh, in, in fact, two lessons from this. One is that we really need a better early warning system for haze. We don't really want to be caught by surprise where you sort of go out, look at the window and suddenly you're, you know, you're caught and says, what happened? Uh, so we've been, the, HM, the IMC, the Interministerial Committee, has really uh, looked at this in depth together with the experts. And uh, we started by giving you Singaporeans the health advisory for the next day, if you notice. Previously, it was just updates right now. But we said we need a predictive model. I don't, you know, the, whether it's a three-hour PSI or the 24-hour rolling PSI is historical. Every time it occurs, I'm reporting to you something that has happened. And honestly, somebody can look out a window and sort of, you know, make his guess on what he thinks the PSI is. What we really wanted to have, or what really Singaporeans wanted is, can you predict for me the next couple of hours or the next day so that organisers can plan their activities, I can take actions and so on and so forth. And we thought that was a very sensible request. Uh, so we started publishing next day health advisories, uh, which has helped. But uh, the problem is not so simple. And Muir is actually looking, the health experts, the and the weather experts at NEA and Muir to see to come up to work at a better predictive model, looking at the hotspots, looking at the weather patterns, looking at the historical data, correlate that with actual haze conditions, a more scientifically based rigorous method. Uh, I think all of us can recognize how difficult it is to predict weather, but uh, those limitations uh, said if we can have a better model, a, more, a model that we can trust, or a more reliable model, I think it will help us all. So a better model to predict whether that we are at risk of haze. The third lesson is that information management is key. A lack of information or misinformation uh, can cause fear and even panic, which is probably what we saw at a scale on when uh, June 20th when there was a run on Mars. That was what happened. And so we need to proactively put out information to the public so that they can take sensible precautions for themselves. You have to cater to the needs of different groups from one end to the other. Uh, we are trying to learn how to do this and we've started. 
The guidelines, we simplified it, gave daily health advisory with real-time adjustments. So now, NEA puts out a health advisory but changes it when the conditions uh, warrant it. We put up a Hayes website, a one-stop authoritative source of information online, and then we conducted technical briefings. The key lesson is information management is key. We're constantly learning about this, and I, and I, I, I agree that we can improve on this. And we will certainly aim to improve on this, but this is a key strategy in any emergency, contingency or crisis. Well, the next phase was to restore, after we've restored calm, was to keep Singaporeans going because we were determined that the haze would not overwhelm us and that we would continue with life normally as, as far as possible to minimise the disruption. We, government introduced practical measures on the ground. You remember the uh, scheme that Prime Minister announced where certain groups, especially the poor and the vulnerable, if they go to see the polyclinics or GPs, they would pay no more than $10 and the government would subsidise the bill. I think that's been well subscribed. Uh, MSF set up a fund to give uh, subsidies for childcare centres to air con at least one or more rooms so that if the haze worsened, certain childcare centres which don't have air con rooms at least have one room or more. We wanted to focus in two areas, where the vulnerable groups and the groups exposed to if the haze worsened uh, would be. This would be schools, childcare centres, uh, businesses and activities that a lot of workers did work outdoors, construction, logistics, uh, F&B outlets, alfresco dining for instance. We also wanted to focus on critical and essential areas, power, water, uh, utilities, banking and financial, transport. We were, wanted to make sure that all groups were on board, meaning the tripartite partners, the businesses, the unions, government, as well as community. Uh, and the key message then was that even if the haze worsened, turn hazardous, adjust, slow down, don't stop. Let's keep Singapore going. Let's don't allow it to overwhelm us. Don't allow the haze to overwhelm us. Uh, let's try to get on with our lives as much as possible because that's the way that we manifest our resilience and our ability to overcome. Through this, uh, because we didn't have much time for various agencies to examine their plans and to make adjustments, was that uh, it, was a, it was a good occasion for our contingency plans to be validated. And I think that we were able to respond much faster uh, this time because of our experiences in the past decade. SARS, for example, I mean, Salma was in the thick of it. H5N1, if you have forgotten, H1N1, and the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Each time that happened, we stepped up and just examined. So uh, the fact that the haze required us to activate plans uh, gave us confidence that the so-called Singapore system works, our response plans work. And uh, that's quite an assurance. Obviously, there are room for improvement each time something happens, but we know that our plans, our structures are functioning as intended. There's a fifth lesson and final lesson that I, I took away, and that uh, through this response to the haze, resilience for us, we mentioned, we talked a lot about resilience, how that through this haze episode, we hope that the way Singaporeans responded would show how resilient we are. And resilience, uh, must also mean Singaporeans taking their own initiative to respond to the haze in their own way. And here, I, I must say, I'm, I was really gratified with uh, what various groups were doing. Nobody told them what to do. For example, you know, you had groups, SG, Hayes, uh, and various other groups distributing masks on their own, going out to purchase masks. Some were very uh, innovative. Some actually got masks from overseas and just brought it in, ordered it distributed it. Uh, businesses I knew on their own, many construction companies that we visited, had already gotten masks for their workers. And Singaporeans proactively helping out in small ways. Some opening up their homes, their aircon rooms to say, well, if you don't have it, 
we just opened up, you come and just share and just take refuge here. I think this is a good sign for nation building. And I think if Singaporeans continue to respond this way, uh, it adds to our resilience. I think we are better prepared, both our people and agencies, so that if the haze uh, does return, uh, we are confident that uh, Singapore will take it, Singaporeans will take it in our stride and that our systems will continue as, as they are and we'll continue on with our lives. Uh, if we take sensible precautions, look after ourselves and each other, uh, I, I'm confident that uh, the haze won't disrupt our lives. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, government agencies will continue to sharpen our contingency plans and apply the lessons learned during this episode. And the Interministerial Committee will remain watchful and, uh, during this dry season uh, because, um, as we know, the haze can return.